Hi, session six of Egan Matrix Programming for the Hawken Continuum. Today, we're not going to do that much programming. We're going to talk about connecting the continuum up to an analog modular synthesizer. In uh, my case, Eurorack, um, but it could be any analog synthesizer. And the preferred way to do this is to connect your continuum to the continuum voltage converter, we'll call CVC, that you can get from Hawken. Uh, it's the box up here that's a 1U rack mount box uh, with feet, so you can lay it on something like I'm doing here, or you can rack mount it. Uh, this box is an absolute necessity to effectively connect your fingerboard to your modular. I mean, you could do other things like using envelope followers and um, MIDI to CV converters, but this is really the way to go. And though the box is not cheap, uh, if you're into modular synthesis, you're used to paying a lot of money per module. So the box is really a very cost-effective way to control your setup th from the continuum. Um, so now let's t take a look at uh, at how, to, how to connect this thing up. Now, in my case, when I bought the Continuum, I uh, received a, an iConnect Mio uh, MIDI interface with it that allows me to connect up the Continuum to my laptop or other computer, and it works fine, but this is more just a cable with a, and a converter in it. You'll need something um, with more ports to connect up all the uh, devices so that your editor and your CVC are working in conjunction with the continuum. Now in my case I had a, an iConnect MIDI 4 Plus uh, lying around so I connected up uh, to that per the manual. This is an extraction that I adapted uh, for my own purposes uh, from the manual set that comes with the firmware distribution um, and you can connect up to that uh, MIDI uh, device just like it says in the manual, um, by connecting your uh, continuum uh, up to the MIDI device and connecting uh, the I squared C line up into the CVC and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But I found that uh, I could not get things to work just with that iConnect MIDI 4. I had to actually connect the iConnect Mio to it uh, uh, and then connect that to my computer and then everything started working. So if you're in the same boat as me and you're having issues getting things working, this setup works for me. There's probably a lot of other ways to do it, but um, enough said there. So now let's get into using the CVC with your, um, your editor. Now you don't have to really do anything. What you can do is uh, bring up an empty um, uh, patch in your editor because the CVC is by default going to connect up to your continuum and you don't have to do any programming. By default, your W, X, Y, N, Z preset parameters are going to activate the CVC and uh, you're off to the races. Now on the CVC itself, you'll see that there are four sets of W, X, Y, and Z uh, CV outputs one, two, three, four, and all those are um, activated through the matrix in various ways that we'll look at now. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, if I press the fingerboard, um, you'll see that little red LED lights up when one of the uh, CV channels is active. Uh, the blue light just means the CVC has power. And I've uh, attached each CV s set of outputs to a different sound source so you can kind of tell when each uh, port is active. Let's go and look at the editor now and the few sets of parameters that will be useful for you to effectively use the CVC, the first being the uh, polyphony setting. Now, because there's four sets of outputs on your CVC, and if you're using them all, you want to set this to four. Uh, 
you can set it to less if you don't want to use as many. And frankly, very often I'll just connect my continuum up to one uh, oscillator or one Eurorack sound source and uh, play away. So it's quite frequently that I'll use bass polyphony of one here. Uh, that's all you have to worry about with polyphony. We'll keep it on four since we have uh, all four sets of lines active. Uh, next, you can set uh, here the voltage um, outputs that are appropriate for your analog synth. Uh, you have different options here for, you know, gating voltage, um, fun one volt per octave voltage, and what the Y and Z voltages are. Uh, there's even a couple options there, that, that list of Voyager and Buchla. Um So uh, you likely know what your synth is capable of capable of go in there and set it appropriately all right now no priority is the last and most important option that you're going to want to set because this is going to affect how the CVC outputs things based on your uh, fingers on the fingerboard let's just go through the options here on the default use oldest MIDI channel for new notes if I press a note on the fingerboard I'll press the same note now and look what happens on the CVC the the notes are cycling through the channels now if I press different notes they'll still cycle if I press two notes in the same time, I want to do a little polyphony. They'll kind of, you know, cycle as well. If I do three notes, they cycle as well. Of course, I can play four notes there as well. So th this mode, to me, um, is very useful if you want to create some kind of changing texture, um, almost uh, aleatoric in maybe in sound uh, because cause even though uh, there's a repeating pattern there, the audience or uh, may not hear it as such as things rotate around. Let's look at the second option here, use a uh, channel with the same pitch. This is very much like the previous one, only if I play the same pitch, which I'll do now, you'll see it's staying on whatever channel it came in on. If I go to a new pitch and then play that on the same note, that stays. If I just play different pitches, it will rotate around similar to the first mode. Of course, I can do the same thing if I play um, a polyphony now. Uh, it's staying on the same two notes because I haven't changed anything, or I can do the same thing with three notes or four notes. Um, I think you get the idea. Now the next option, use lowest channel number, is very useful because that one is totally predictable. Uh, on this one, whatever your single note pressed is, is always going to come out on the lowest channel. If I then use two notes, they'll always come out on channel one and two. Three notes, one, two, and three, and four notes two, three, and four. So everything is very predictable, and I find this um, mode is the one I use the most. Um, but other people might like the others better. Uh, the last option uh, is using the highest uh, uh, MIDI channel within a polyphony, and you can set within polyphony one, two, three, or four. If you set it within polyphony one, uh, no matter what you play, the highest channel there, channel 4, is going to output. Even if I play polyphonically, you see it's kind of trying to decide what's going on there, but I have a, I have a monophonic module, so I'm only going to get one voice playing. I guess you could get some kind of an effect going doing that. Um, so those are the options of, of using the uh, CVC. Let's set it back to lowest channel for now. Now, one other aspect of the uh, matrix is that on banks B and C, there's the option to set CVC control. Let's do that. 
when I set CVC control, you'll also notice up top here it says CVC via the matrix. What this is now doing is requiring me to program the matrix to actually trigger the CVC module. So if I now go to the fingerboard and, and play something, and I'm pressing all kinds of stuff now, but you'll see nothing is triggering on the CVC itself because I haven't made any programming assignments. Let's do something simple to prove the case here. Um, we'll create a little shape generator that does something three times a second on shape generator one. We'll go to formula A. I've already set it up so shape, gener shape generator one is active um, and I'm sending the full unity value. Um, now, if I set in my direct column A on W, ah, that shape generator is coming in and triggering W on the CVC. Okay. Uh, obviously, you can become a lot more complicated than that, and you can use the full power of Egan Matrix to program things to interface to your CVC box. Uh, wonderful uh, addition to what you can do through control voltage. That pretty much sums up the uh, basics of using the continuum with the CVC to control your analog synth. Uh, maybe I'll just close by um, uh, stating one uh, little trick, or at least something that I like to do, is certain modules um, have to be gated. And so the W here gate out of here, for example, into this mutable instruments elements module, that's a necessity because I have to gate that module somehow. Um, uh, if I set to lowest channel number and I take away my CVC and go back to my default matrix, um, now uh, I'm triggering that module uh, through the gate. Um, I'm also uh, you running, routing a Y from that module into uh, the geometry uh, parameter of this uh, elements module. So as I move my finger in the Y direction, you can hear I'll get a um, change in the sound. So Y can be an important addition uh, to your setup to control secondary parameters. X obviously is normally going to be connected to your one volt per octave inputs to your modules and Z is in very important to get the full expressive potential out of your fingerboard in relationship to playing your analog synth. Um, what I typically do, as you can see here, is I don't use W at all. I don't use a gate at all to trigger my modules when I don't need to because um, what I'll do is run a, the Z uh, you know, finger pressure into a voltage controlled amplifier, a VCA, and then I'll route the output, the sound output into that VCA and set the VCA up so that when I press the fingerboard, it's the fingerboard envelope that's triggering things, not an envelope generator or a gate. Right? And we can just um, test that. Here I'm playing a note and as I lift my finger up, you can hear that wonderful Z function of the continuum. And as I press harder, I'll be louder. And of course, I can get that wonderful, smooth portamento because it's con continuous voltage, not MIDI. Um, and that's one of the great things about using the continuum with your analog th synthesizers. You can get that wonderful, smooth, uh, you know, pitch change that you can with the continuum. So that wraps it up. The basics of connecting up to your modular synth. Obviously, there's a world of complexity uh, beyond this, but as the basics, that's all you need to know. So till the next time.